Good evening, everyone. I hope you are enjoying your dinner. Um, we wanted to go ahead and get started with our program. To get started, I would like to welcome Mrs. Marva Lackey and Mr. Dean Lackey to give a brief welcome so that we can begin our evening. Good evening, everyone. And it will be a good evening because we're here to honor five very special students that we'll tell you about shortly. But first, I would like to welcome friends and family from the community, as well as those of you who were professors or on staff at Coastal once upon a time, as when Ron was dean of students, then a professor and chaplain here. I would like to introduce you to what we might think of as newcomers to Coastal for some of us old timers, although many have been here for some time. First of all, we have our president, Michael Benson. Would you stand? <clears throat> president Benson is the third president of Coastal Carolina University, and he has just had a new book published Daniel Coit Gilman and the Birth of the American Research University, a book to put on our reading list. <laughs> he will also be holding a book discussion at the University of Notre Dame. Travis Overton is here. He's the Vice President for Executive Initiatives. Will you stand when I call your name? <laughs> Meredith Kennedy is Senior Vice President of University Council. Is she here? Christopher Johnson is Chief Executive Officer of the Coastal Educational Foundation. Claudia Bornholt. <laughs> Hi, Claudia. <laughs> she is Dean of the Edwards College of Humanities and Fine Arts. There's a play coming up that you might want to come see um, that Claudia is responsible for. Mariel Pagan Smith. Hi, Marion. She's Assistant Vice President for Student Engagement and Student Life. Ileana Melendez. She's definitely a newcomer to Coastal, just a few months. She's Assistant Vice President and Dean of Students. Elizabeth Carter, Assistant, there she is, Assistant Vice President for Student Wellness and Health Equity. Harry Titus, Director of Strategic Initiatives and Assessment. The Lackey family owes a very special debt of gratitude to Dr. Yvonne Friedman, Vice President of Student Affairs, and to Tamika Grzybowski, who is Dr. Freeman's Administrative Coordinator. Would you please stand? <laughs> they are both responsible for what goes for this event, and um, I would like for you to join me in thanking them for the enjoyment that we will have this evening. Ron and I had three sons, Scott and his wife, Elizabeth. They live in Myrtle Beach and they attend this dinner regularly. Mark and Amy live in New York City and are unable to be here tonight. Dean and Patricia live in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Dean was here for Easter and was able to stay over and be with us, so I've asked him to introduce you to the nominees for the Ronald Lackey Service Award. I will now read the names of the nominees. Please stand as I call your name. Tyreek Pierre. Thank you. 
Haley Miller, Haley Cornell, Cage Mitchell, and Jalel Oates. So please join me in a round of applause for them one more time. Tonight is about you. Since 1991, a group of students like you have been honored for making a special impact on this community. You've committed yourselves to a cause or several causes of your choosing and devoted an incredible amount of time and effort in this commitment to the university and the community. Dr. Lackey, or dad as I like to call him sometimes, <laughs> And if you want to know a lot more about him besides that picture there, I'll tell you about it, about some adventures at home. But anyway, <laughs> Dr. Lackey lived his life with that commitment. He would be pleased that you have already discovered what you will find fulfilling in your life, that of serving others. The rest of us will try to live up to the example that you have set for us. You are to be congratulated for being nominated. Thank you so much. Um, again, my name is Dr. Yvonne Hernandez Friedman, and I'm the Vice President for Student Affairs. Just to tell you a little bit about this award, the Ronald D. Lackey Service Award was established in 1991 in honor of the late Dr. Ronald D. Lackey for his dedication to campus and community service. Dr. Lackey was the university's first dean of students and later served as the university's chaplain. As I was reading more about how Dr. Lackey lived his life, one of the most salient parts of his story for me is that his teaching reflected his openness to a variety of spiritual awakenings and his acceptance of the authentic explorations of others and anyone willing to plunge into the unknown with him. I appreciated reading that because it showed his deep commitment to education as something more than a mental exercise of rogue memorization, but an embodiment of sensing and thinking. In Spanish, we say the word sentir, which is to sense or to feel, and pensar, which is to think. It's an ancestral way of knowing that is based on wholeness and harmony. That includes faith and reason, as well as science. Dr. Lackey knew and understood this holistic approach to education and welcomed a blending of an intellectual and sensory experience. His legacy of service to CCU and Horry County is affirming. The connection of education, service, and personal transformation showed his commitment to community, inclusiveness, and relationships that was so validating to his students and his colleagues. It is for this reason we are honoring those students who have served the university and surrounding community through involvement and leadership this evening. I'd like to take a moment to invite our five finalists to give their brief reflections of how they have served the community. So if I could, invite all of our finalists to the front of the stage. And if I could have Mrs. Lackey join us to do the presentation of the plaques. So if we could have our finalists come up, please. So I'm gonna introduce each of our finalists and give them a, an opportunity to give their reflection. So the first person I'm going to introduce is Tyreek Pierre. He is a business administration major, marketing major, and IBST minor. Tyreek. Good evening, everyone. 
Um, first, I'd like to thank everyone involved for putting this evening together. Uh, it's been a lovely evening. I know all those in attendance uh, are thoroughly enjoying it. I would like to then thank Dr. Ina for nominating me. Um, it's without you that this journey is possible. Um, thank you to members of the committee for your consideration of myself for this award. I am th uh, thoroughly appreciative of that. Uh, looking back on my time here, there have been many people that have inspired me, motivated me, and supported me in becoming better than I was the day before, uh, many of which are in the room today. And so for you all and all the others that could not be here, I'm also thankful for y'all. Um, thank you, lastly, to the Lackey family. Uh, my time at CCU has not been long, but I've heard many wonderful things about uh, Dr. Lackey as well as the family, uh, and I am extremely grateful to be recognized for an award, uh, an award in his name and in his honor and his spirit. So thank you all for that. Um, excuse me for a second. It might get a little bit emotional. Uh, um, it's not every day that, especially as a black male, you get to stand up in this capacity and, and this type of occasion for this moment. Um, and look at your mom and the person that gave you life and say thank you for that and also say mama I made it you know <laughs> um, I made it to a version of myself that little me and you would have only dreamed of a version of myself that is the best version of myself for this chapter of my life and so I hope that you're proud uh, I'm glad that you could be here seven hours away from home tonight as I reflect on my time at Coastal there's only one word for me to use to describe my journey transformative Transformative in the fact that who I was when I came is not the same person that I am as I am moving beyond. Through the worst and the best, I've grown. I've never lost, I've only learned. Transformative in nature, but not in a sense that any part of me has changed. I've only adopted, evolved, and grew. I'm still the same underclassman that enjoys bike rides and walks around campus over being in a crowd of too many people. In my transformation, I did not lose sight of who I was. In fact, I used that to become who I am today a better version of that young man, still curious, driven, and always still learning. I'm grateful for my time at Coastal and whether selected as a recipient of this award or not, I'm grateful to have been recognized for the impact that I've had on this campus and the experiences I was able to share with those within. Nothing will ever take away from the joy, the love, and the gratitude I have for this great university and everyone that I have met here along the way. As an institution is nothing without the people in it and I'm forever grateful for the friends that I've met, the brothers I have gained, the mentors I have found, and for the people that ensure that everyone at this great institution feel like they belong. Uh, beyond that, I am forever grateful to be recognized as one of those people who work to make this institution and community better than it was the day before. From general member to pioneer, from new member to president, from committee member to task force co-chair, from bridge student to a broad student. Coastal, you have experienced Tyreek, the student, the leader, the worker, the mentee, the son, the human. And I am grateful that I was able to share myself with all of you all. Thank you. Haley Miller, special education major and psychology minor. Okay, first, I'm sorry, I am a little nervous and I have a little cough, just to start off with that. Um, but I do want to thank the Lackey family um, for giving me this opportunity to be here. I want to thank uh, my boyfriend for coming to support me, my friend Riley for nominating me, and the other professors, my friends, and everyone else who supports me every single day um, and encourage me, encourages me to come here and just do what I do all for my years at Coastal. Um, starting out at Coastal, I was a science major. Main reason why I came down here, um, I knew as a freshman I wanted to get involved. I was a little scared. I joined as many clubs as I could get into, um, one being a moment of magic, and I'm still in that today. I love it so much, um, doing the community service through them, joined some science-related stuff, COVID happened, and I switched and fell in love with education, um, specifically special education through my work for A Moment of Magic, um, and that kind of, I could tell just from that switch being in my classes, finally realizing what I wanted to do in life. I knew I wanted to do more at Coastal than just be a member in a couple clubs. 
Um, so I started joining those clubs my second semester, sophomore year. Um, I joined the South Carolina Education Association and soon became president of that after just a short couple months. Joined Kappa Delta Pi when I was invited. Um, I was in student government almost all four years of coastal um, and kept joining as many things that I love to do or that would help me in my journey through education, um, which I'm very um, happy that I've done. Another thing that I loved while being here at Coastal is also the LIFE program. For those who don't know, the LIFE program um, allows students with intellectual disabilities to come on campus um, and take some classes at Coastal and experience the college life here, to sum it up. Um, I love my work with them. Being that I want to teach high school um, special education, it is great to kind of deal with what they were doing after they got out of high school, kind of seeing their transition out of what I would be teaching them with, which is great. Um, I love all the opportunities that I've had, all the relationships I get to form through friends, through professors, staff, through my jobs, um, any higher ups at Coastal, as well as the connections I get to make outside, whether that's to the organizations I'm a part of, um, being able to join a national organization through my small organizations on campus, and then being able to intern outside of Coastal. Um, currently, I'm at Carolina Forest High School, and being able to get all those connections between them is just really great. Being able to make an impact um, with my students is really great, and being able to make them feel better, um, being that they do kind of get the low end of the stick um, when it comes to <coughs> what they go through at school every day. Um, so with all my work, I just love to be able to help the students at a younger level, because I do all grades, and then also be able to help future educators here on campus, and as well as other kids on campus through my other organizations, and just be able to overall reflect on my relationships with everyone that I got to meet here. So I was very happy and thankful for that. Again, thank you everyone for allowing me to come here uh, and providing this opportunity. Um, thank you. Haley Cornell, music education major and German minor. Right. Hello and good evening, everyone. My name is Haley Cornell, and it is my honor to be here tonight celebrating greatness with the Lackey family, friends, and fellow finalists. To prepare a reflection speech that lasts only a minute or two is quite difficult, considering that there are so many fond memories and milestones throughout the last four years, and I also love to talk. So <laughs> all things considered, I will try to make this brief and give myself some bullet points. <laughs> uh, when I moved here from New Jersey in 2019 to begin my freshman year, I quickly found a home within the Chanticleer Regiment Marching Band Program. This program welcomed me with open arms, and I quickly fell in love with being a member of such a visible and integral part of the university experience. This program quickly became my family. I served in various leadership roles throughout the years. My sophomore year, I served as the Woodwood Captain, and my junior and senior year, I was promoted to serve as a conducting drum major. I had the privilege and honor of leading the band at football games, conducting on the podium for pregame and halftime performances, and leading our pep band. And most notably, I had the recent honor to lead the band overseas for the first time in program history to perform in the 2023 London New Year's Day Parade. Performing, thank you. <laughs> Performing in this parade with groups from all around the world was an incredible experience, and I will never forget the smiles on our band members' faces throughout the week. Most importantly, though, is my work as an Edwards Center for Inclusive Excellence founding research fellow and the creation of the Representatoire Project. This project was created alongside Dr. Eric Schultz, who is my mentor and is, who is here with me tonight, um, which acts as an awareness and education campaign 
centering diversification of the standard repertoire we play in music. Many people are, do not realize or are just simply unaware of, the mo of how monolithic our music can be. I will never forget the shocked look on audience members' faces after saying I had gone 10 whole years without playing a single piece written by a woman. After asking people to name a famous composer and hearing complete silence in the recital hall, after asking the crowd to name a famous composer who was also a woman. How people reacted when they were told that out of 800 works performed by the New York Philharmonic, only 12 of those were written by composers of color. Then posing the question, does that really represent New York City? This initiative has created significant impact here at Coastal. Through presentations with posters, speeches, and performances, we open people's eyes and show them a problem which many are unaware of a lack of diversity in the music we perform. The Representatoire Project centers historically marginalized communities by performing their music and giving them the same amount of study and dedication that we would traditionally gr grant to composers like Mozart, Beethoven, or Brahms. I interviewed Amanda Harburg, a woman and living composer and pianist from Rutgers University. After this, I created a collaborative lecture recital featuring her music. We also had Grammy-nominated flutist and composer Valerie Coleman complete a residency at CCU where she performed her composition Portraits of Langston in a sold out recital on campus. Most recently, I published an article through the International Clarinet Association entitled Repertoire as Representation, where I discussed the positive implications of performing and studying music from diverse voices. I also recently performed my senior recital and my entire program consisted of music written by women. Now, several other music students have become involved in the Representatoire Project and they will continue the program, that music that challenges the status quo. Now as I conclude my student teaching internship and begin to turn a new leaf as a music educator, I'm able to teach students and create a music program that fosters the same sense of community I found within Coastal. Students also deserve to play music written by people who look like them, who are from the same places, who speak the same languages, who are from the same communities. Students deserve to see themselves in the music that they're playing. I plan on dedicating my career to creating a supportive and inclusive music learning environment for all students. And finally, if my time at CCU has taught me anything, it's that ad any adversity you may face, whether it's a small bump in the road or a global pa pandemic that changes life as we know it, <laughs> family and unity will always prevail. Thank you. Cage Mitchell, Applied Physics major and Applied Mathematics minor. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, wow, what an honor it is to be standing on this stage in front of you tonight. When I look back at my time here at CCU, I, I can't help but smile. As a hometown student, this school has always meant a lot to me and my family. My mom and dad met here back in the 80s, and my sister graduated two years ago with a degree in English. Growing up in the area and spending time on campus since a young age, I knew what CCU had to offer, which is why when I started college, I defined a very specific, achievable goal. Take advantage of every opportunity that CCU has to offer and connect with as many people as possible, students, faculty, and staff. I didn't know it then, but this goal would lead me to achieve so much more than I ever thought possible in just four short years. I worked on campus, researched with professors, joined clubs, and attended all sorts of events. I maintained a perfect GPA, landed an internship at NASA, and as a tutor and teaching assistant, helped students realize that they can do it. I met amazing mentors, built lifelong friendships, and can truly claim that I never turned down an opportunity if there was a block in my schedule. But these, opportunities, these accomplishments are not possible alone. Dr. Lackey stood for many things, but two of those that align with me the most are family and faith. I'm blessed to have both of my parents in attendance here today, and I can truly say that this award would be as much theirs 
as it would be mine. Without my family and important mentors like Dr. West and Dr. Carr, I would not be on the path that I am today. But more important is my faith. My faith in God, my faith in the unknown, and my faith that when your intentions are true, your effort is high, and you have a passionate heart for change, dreams can become reality. I believe that if serving is below you, then leading is above you. I am confident that during my time here at CCU, I didn't just take opportunities to be a leader, but I also made it my mission to serve with an open mind and accepting attitude. I've opened my heart to the campus and community and hopefully left a positive mark on the people and places around me. I have accepted every opportunity with open arms and pursued my goals with tenacity. I hope that I have led by example and shows, shown those around me that hard work really can pay off. I am beyond thankful for this campus, the people it has put in my life, and my future as a Chanticleer. Thank you. And finally, Jalila Jalia Oates, psychology major. Good evening, everyone. Um, <laughs> I didn't expect to talk back. Love it. <laughs> um, I was I struggled to write this. I did because I feel like I should be honest up here. Since all of my other finalists were honest, I feel like I should be honest with y'all. I struggled to write this. Number one, whenever I reflect upon Coastal, I'm reminded that my time is dwindling down. I graduate in May. The other part that made this difficult was that this is the first time that I've had to verbalize what Coastal has meant to me. I can see the change in my actions, the change in my beliefs, the change in the way that I speak, but to actually verbalize it, that, that hit me. So I did what any 20-year-old would do, I called my mom, <laughs> and I said, I have this big speech. It's important to me. I don't, I don't know what to say. So she gave me the advice that any mother would give me. Speak from the heart. Be yourself. That's not really what I wanted to hear. I wanted something a little bit more concrete. <laughs> but after I got off the phone and I really reflected on who I am now compared to who I am freshman year, there is one thing that's in my heart right now that I didn't have, and that's hope. Coastal taught me to dream. When I came in as a freshman, I was very realistic. I was very set in my ways. This is what I had to do. I had a plan for everything. I didn't want to hope. I didn't want to dream. But then as I immersed myself in the various research opportunities, as I immersed myself in the various initiatives on campus, as I immersed myself around my peers, I realized that being realistic, it sets limits upon myself. And how could I be around others who don't set limits on me, but I set limits upon myself? It didn't make sense. So being at Coastal, it taught me to dream. It taught me to hope. And it also taught me the impact that my dreams have on others. It's not just about me. It's not just about any of us singularly. It's about collective units. When you walk into a room, they know if you have hope. When you walk into a room, they know if you dream. And as I have gained various leadership positions, and I gained various mentor positions, which I am humbly and I am honored to accept them, I realize that they recognize whether I dream or not. And I want to inspire them to dream. I want them to let them know that it's okay to dream. It's perfectly amazing to dream. It's great to have hope. So I thank you all for being connected to this university because whether you know it or not, you all have inspired me to dream. I wanna thank my peers. I wanna thank my faculty advisors. I wanna thank all of my mentors in this room because you all have inspired me to dream. And I know that I'll never be able to fully repay the Lackey family for the foundation that they set. I know that I'll never be able to fully repay everybody in this room for the foundation and the life that you have given me. But I hope that by simply earning my degree in May, I hope that I continue to dream. I hope by understanding my impact that I have on others and inspiring them to dream as well. I hope that's a start. Thank you.
What a beautiful group of students. Thank you so much. And it's so inspiring to hear about your journeys here at Coastal and wishing you everything as you move to your next journey in life and whatever comes next for you and the dreams that you make for yourself and that you achieve for yourself. So thank you. Dr. Lackey's legacy was built on suffering to grow as he had an extraordinary ability to find gifts in his own physical pain in dealing with type 1 diabetes. His philosophical orientation to engage in the life work of service to others never wavered, which is why we honor him and these students tonight. Dr. Lackey believed education to be participatory, relational, and reflective. For that, we are thankful for his work and for his memory. So as we wrap up this evening, I wanted to include a few thank yous. First to Tamika Moore Grisbowski for organizing this event. The Selection Committee, Ali Tanner, Christopher Wynn, Dr. Corrine Delelio, Sh Sheila Singleton, and Dr. Tiffany Hollis. <laughs> Staff members from the Division of Student Affairs who have volunteered of their time to assist with the event. <laughs> and of course, the staff of Aramark for the lovely food and event setup. And thank you as well to all of the nominators, mentors, friends, professors, educators that are here in the room that are here to support our students and to lift our students up. So for that, we're very thankful for you. So thank you again for coming this evening, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your night. Thank you so much. <laughs>